Damn it. I, <laughs> I just recorded a video, 40 minutes, but I've had the wrong sound card activated and no input. Hopefully this will work now. So let's, uh, this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna rewrite Launch FM so it looks like this and it works like this. We can spawn different uh, Thunars in with different paths. Uh, it will be great. It will be amazing, but let's take it from scratch and uh, yeah, whatever. Bye bye, excellent code. Hello, terrible code. Okay, okay. <clears throat> ah, I know, I know you want it. Uh, got it. Thunar on the right path. Yeah. So we are going to add. I uh, also look at this. No, we haven't done, haven't done this either, and not this, and not this, and not this, and not this. We haven't done this either, and not that. We have to do it again. We're gonna add a path argument to launch FM, and we have to do all this stuff here. Uh, we start by adding a command line option, so we can uh, send a path to launch FM. Then we set a environment variables. Uh, we will refactor the script to use environment variables. It will be this part super fast. Then uh, we need to see if the window exists. We will use i3 get uh, because it have double criteria functionality. We need to escape special characters from titles. We get to this. Uh, if the window doesn't exist, we will create a new window and we will not use i3 run. We will write our own little uh, thing here with uh, these commands. Super easy. Let's see how long it takes now, now, now that I have done it two times already. Um, let's, uh, let's take it from the beginning. Add command line option. Yeah, let's start with that. Let's add a p uh, command line option here, uh, so we can take a path. Uh, God damn it! Path, and this doesn't have this opt-arg thing here. <clears throat> okay, uh, and then we can do this echo path. Then let's just exit the script here. So now it will only read the get opts, uh, echo the path, and then exit. So we have something to test here. Launch FM P hello. Hello, that's great. But hello is not a directory. Maybe we should add that here also. Test, test so we know that it is a directory. We can do that. that that's easy. Whatever. Okay, the command line option works. Good, we added that. But now let's refactor this. So we use environment variables here uh, that will also initiate the, the, the variables for us with default values and stuff. This is really good to do this uh, and uh, uh, it's very easy to do so. And I have uh, already made explained environment variables a bit. Um, so let's call this environment variable. Uh, I like to call, call it like this. Launch FM, which is the name of the script, then the, the var variable here. And let's call this a target directory. This could actually, yeah, this doesn't have to be an environment variable when I think about it. Or let's do it like that. Whatever. So we call this target directory, but this is not the proper way to set an environment variable. I like to specify them at the top of the script in this fashion, as I have shown you before, like this, and then set a default value here. And the default value uh, will be the, the value of a different uh, environment variable that we haven't specified yet, but we do that here before default, and the default uh, directory is home. And now we also echo target directory here instead. Launch FM p hello, it echoes hello. If we don't specify uh, an argument here, 
it says launch FM targeter. Ah, because we need to do this. Yeah, let's put this also. No, we don't need to. This this should work. There now it says home because it take uh, the default target directory is the value of launch FM default directory and the, that is home. This is why this doesn't have to be an environment variable. It's whatever. And we could also, uh, if we specify this target directory as an environment variable on the command line here instead, is equal to Bart uh, launch fm. Now it says Bart, but if we have a command line option, hello again. Now it's hello again because the command line option will overwrite whatever the defaults here are. Great, great, great. Um, so the path, I also want to create uh, environment variables for the default, uh, con for the containers. So let's uh, do three more here. Default container is D. And the, the, the nice thing with having these as uh, um, <clears throat> as uh, environment variables is uh, that you can set it in, for example, bash RC or X in it. You can export these environment variables and, and have it uh, configured in a, in a central location. It's, it's really nice. Secondary container is B. Target container is the default container, or the default is the default container. And then we rename this here. There. Nice. Okay. Uh, done with the environment variables thing here. Now we want to see if the window exists. And we have uh, uh, some Thunar windows here. Uh, I don't know how many. Let's do a WMCTRLLX. Yeah, I, I got a couple of B container windows here. Here is one with this weird uh, <laughs> directory open. And here is the dot directory and here is the git directory. So we have those three and we also have this one here. So uh, when we execute here uh, launch fm uh, with uh, the path, uh, let's take one that's open here. Dot for instance here. Let's see if we can find that one. There it is. Now it says homeboot dot. Now we want to know if this uh, directory uh, exists or this window exists. <clears throat> we could of course just parse this output of wmctrl and that's that's one method and it's not uh, terrible but it's uh, a bit inconvenient we have to write a parser and it's yeah it's it's a bit weird. Um, and another thing is, even if we did so, it would be really complicated if we would have, uh, for instance, the dot directory open in both of these, uh, uh, in two windows like we have here. Now, then we cannot just search for the title. It, it will give us multiple res results, but we know that we are searching for, for uh, a window in either the B or the D container. We could also do um, echo target container is la launch fm target container target container is d because that's a default you know the only way to change that is to specify c b and then it changes the b container here <coughs> uh, and we know that the class name of the B container is Thunar capital B, uh, yeah, here, Thunar B and the D container is D. Another way uh, to, to, get the, to, to get the identify a window 
is to use uh, X2 tool, and that's uh, it, it's perfect for that. It's great, but uh, the, it it have a one lacking feature, and that is you cannot have multiple criteria. You can only search for either a class or a title or something like that. But I have written my own script, uh, i3 get, I call that. You can find it here in i3 as, which I updated yesterday to, <laughs> to make this function work again because I had accidentally broke it uh, uh, on the last um, update, whatever. And you can, of course, read the wiki here uh, about i3 get, how it works, uh, because I will do it really quickly here now, what we are doing with it. But it's not uh, that complicated or difficult to use i3 get when executed without any command line options just prints the com container id of the currently active window uh, you can also specify the print option here uh, and then you can print the instance name or uh, the class name or the title and or the workspace and or the window id container id and so on uh, so i3 get is really good uh, to, to get a specific output. You don't need to uh, parse any weird list or anything. But it also supports multiple criteria because now, now we, uh, by default, the criteria is the currently active window. But if we say class Thunar D here, for instance, now it prints uh, the information here about the, uh, this, this window. But if we, if we would do uh, Thunar B instead, it will just print now uh, the first found uh, Thunar B window. Uh, so we, uh, and we have several windows matching Thunar B. And this is also different from X2 tool. It will print a list of all windows uh, matching Thunar B here, for instance. But we can uh, also add multiple criteria. So we could add a title and here, the title is a bit long, but whatever. Home bud dot dash file manager, and now it prints that that one, you know. And we could change here to Thunar D, and then it would print the information about that window as well. If we would add a window criteria for a window that doesn't exist, let's just. Thunar E, then we get no matching window. And this is what we will use to, to identify, uh, to get, to figure out if a window exists or not. So, <clears throat> just paste this guy in here. And we don't actually need any special print here. We, the container ID is fine. It's, it, it is actually just what we need. But we need to replace here uh, this E with a uh, target container. And this with the path expanded. Uh, because it may or may not have a tilde, uh, but we always want to expand it to the full path. So the safest way to do that is, yeah, let's do this for now, but we will change this in a second here. Launch FM target container and then file manager, boink. I'll save this now. And then we test our launch FM again p dot b and there now it prints the, the container id of, of that uh, window and the we should get a different uh, 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 container id but now it doesn't exist any uh, dot directory in the d container and now we get this error message instead <clears throat> let's see what we have in the notes i to get double criteria yeah so now now we have a way here to, to find a window, but there are edge cases here that we I think we should uh, take care of right away. And that is uh, here. You see this window, uh, or let's do WMCTRL. Because the, this window have this title here. And this title is weird because it have 
brackets and parentheses and stuff in it and i3 get it uses awk and the regular expressions to match uh, to match uh, uh, the, the, the criteria here and the regular expression will get confused here by the uh, brackets and the parentheses here for example so if I try to search here for this window even if it do exist we'll get the no matching window so we need to escape some some special characters like for instance I think it's enough with just the parentheses and the brackets here and now we get a match uh, <clears throat> but there there can be other weird uh, special characters that needs to be escaped as well and there is actually a very uh, nifty neato little thing you can do to automatically escape uh, uh, characters like this let's uh, remove this backslashes so we get the original title here you can use printf and you know printf and then percentage s and then new line here this will just print this uh, the argument here as, as it is but if you instead use uh, percentage q you will get uh, the line with escaped special characters. And notice also it escapes uh, spaces and uh, uh, some other characters here as well. But that, that's uh, perfectly fine if it escapes more than, than what's ac ac actually needed. And as you can see here, the printf, it takes no time at all. It's basically free to do this conversion. So uh, I think we should do that here right away after the get opts. Uh, we could actually do it here. Uh, yeah, let's do it like this. So target container is equal to the output of print f percentage q the argument is this and here we could also uh, replace any uh, tildes with the home directory so that's also done and then I know it's not the prettiest line but but it will get the work done here for us and now it will work to search for for containers with weird characters and stuff in it and uh, believe me they, it's not that unusual that you have directories with brackets inside of them i don't know i i have never uh, uh downloaded torrent files or anything like that but i, I i've heard that many of these so-called release groups like uh, brackets in in their directories and so on. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. Whatever. Uh, uh, uh. We got this. We got this. Let's check things off the list so we don't get sidetracked. We are staying on track here. Well, we, what we need to do now is store the output here of i3get in uh, a variable. And, and what it, the output is a container ID if it finds it. If it doesn't find it, it will print this error message here. But this uh, error message is printed to standard out, meaning uh, that if we would store the output in a variable here, it would only store the st uh, standard out uh, and not the standard error message. It, it's printed to a different output. So we can do uh, con container ID is equal to output of this i3 get thing. Uh, and then we can do a test here if container ID has a value that's what the N stands for then echo window exist else echo window doesn't exist bye okay save uh, container ID there launch fm p dot cd 
target container D. No matching window. Window doesn't exist. So now it entered here, it didn't find any window. But if we would open dot directory here, now it should match it. Window exists. Note, I haven't added this, but if the window exists, uh, then uh, all we want to do is focus that window as soon as, as quick as possible. And of course, the, the easy, easiest solution would be to just send an i3 message, uh, focus and with a, a container ID as a criteria or whatever. Uh, the problem with that approach, however, is that uh, if the, the window may exist, but it, uh, with, with my layout at least, sometimes the window is hidden. For instance, if I hide, hide the, the D container there now, we, we will still get window exist, but it is uh, hidden on the scratch pad. And i3 message focus now, that, that uh, can give you unpredictable results. So instead we will use uh, i3 run. Uh, to to focus the window, but we will only use it to focus since we know that the window exists uh, We don't need a command We don't need to rename anything and Instead of using the class here. We use the container ID as the criteria because the, uh, Then we are sure we, we will focus the right window because we can have multiple windows with the same class name here So We can just do it like this and now, if I execute this, it focuses that window and, and brings it to the uh, to the correct position and everything. All, all of that is taken care of with i3 run here. So that's great. Now, all we have to do is uh, create a new window if, if it doesn't exist. So let's uh, let's uh, add uh, some directory that doesn't exist. Git, for instance. Target container D, no matching window, window doesn't exist. And what we want to do now is, is uh, create the window and that is basically what we had in, in the script uh, before. Let's uh, copy this whole thing in, but we will modify a bunch of stuff anyways. So first we, we check if target container is not equal to B, then we set uh, set it to a, to the default container. Uh, here now we should use our environment variables instead. So target container is now called launch fm target container, and this is uh, oh, damn it. Secondary container is what we call the B container now. And I know it, it, it these are ugly, you know, the, the uh, environment variables. But sometimes ugly is nice. Uh, secondary container. If, uh, if target container is not secondary container, set target container to D, but we don't set it to D now, we set it to the default container instead. And then we execute rule, parse rules, not path, target directory. We don't need to do this special test if it uh, exists or not. Uh, there. Save. Uh, if it is, if it is uh, the B container, the secondary container, then we set uh, the rule to list view. Then we execute our, our uh, xconf query stuff here to set either through uh, list view or, or icon view. When we, so that will be applied when we spawn the window and then i3 run here looking for a class uh, a window with a class name thunar target container this will not work now uh, since uh, target container is not a good criteria we instead we look for for the title we basically need the same thing as we had here with i3 get and we can use i3 get here again um, so let's comment this 
I think we run out. And, and we can actually spawn Thunar with the normal uh, Thunar uh, command and uh, add target directory here as the argument. Like this. Uh, and this will just uh, spawn Thunar here. We can comment this guy out also and try the script now, see where we are. Git C D point. And now, um, yeah, it, it went all, all the way here. Uh, executed Thunar with launch directory and we got the Git directory. And it actually applied the right uh, uh, layout here. <coughs> But of course we want it in, in our uh, uh, in the right container. And that is done actually by i3 here. It will execute our window rules. Uh, if we look here, uh, we have the window rules for Thunar B, uh, then it uh, i3 Fira move to B container, Thunar D move to D container. And these window rules will get triggered when the class name changes of a window, it will uh, test the, the, the window rules. So all we need to do in launch.fm here is to change uh, to the correct class name. Because now this window, it have only just Thunar as the class name. And to change the class name, uh, we did that in update.fm not that long ago here with x 2 we changed the instance name. We can borrow that line here. Um, This time we don't send any keys, uh, but we do this set window and we set the class name, which is instance to Thunar and then rule, but we also want to set the class name or the class. It's so confusing, it's so weird that they used class and class name, it's like why? And the class is of course Thunar uh, and then uh, it's this thing here. And then we also need the window ID, so we, we, we change uh, the right window. And we can get the window ID with the i3 get as well. But remember, the default is the container ID. So now we need this print and then D. That will print the window ID instead of the container ID. And we can change the name here also to window ID. And then it will work with our variable here. But we will add also another option to i3 get here when uh, because now we execute Thunar with this command and then uh, ex execute i3 get and search for a window. Uh, but if the window doesn't exist now, which is possible when we execute it right right after this command here, um, to make sure that the window uh, exists, we can add this sync uh, option as well. <clears throat> and then we could actually execute this in the background. I think that will be a little bit faster uh, if we do it like this. Because the sync, uh, it will work like this. If, if uh, the window it searches for doesn't exist, uh, then it will try and search for it again and again and again. And, and it will try like that for 10 seconds. Then it will uh, print an error, couldn't find a window or whatever. And this is great when you're doing things like this, you launch an application. Now Thunar, it, it actually uh, executes very fast this, when, when you're using the Thunar daemon. You see, yeah, 57 milliseconds to, to create a window. So, so it's extremely fast, uh, but still it can be good to add this sync flag here. And this should get us the window ID and then uh, rename that window immediately after, afterwards. And then when the class name changes, i3, i3 will uh, uh, see that and uh, execute the window rule and that will in turn put it in our right container. So let's test it. Launch FM, p git c d boink. 
look like it worked and here the error no matching window that comes from the beginning of the script that comes from here it actually leaks out this error message standard error is always printed kind of and if we would execute this again now it focus the window because now it finds it you know and if a different uh, window would be open here and we execute with uh, git works really nice and if we would wanted to we could change this to b container instead now it opened the window here in the b container we can do a different directive p and p whatever now something weird happened here not sure not sure and now you can see now i3 get here is looking for this uh, window there and and uh, 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 executed or exited without uh, a valid uh, but this is from i3 get and this is from uh, uh, this is from x22 not sure why it didn't find it here it's weird because it created the window let's look at the i3 get here something is wrong with it i know what it is i know what it is uh, the class here we are searching for a window with the class Thunar uh, and then target container. But this is not correct, you know, because this window that we create here, it doesn't have this class. The class is only Thunar, and that's what we should search for. Uh, so, and this means that we may or may not have accidentally renamed the wrong windows here. So what we do is we change this criteria to this instead which is a regular expression, a class that is Thunar, and then it ends there. So otherwise, without this dollar sign, it would still match uh, Thunar D and Thunar B. But now, hopefully, this will work. Let's try it again. There, it worked. Nice, nice. Uh, test with dot. Worked. Test with uh, picks. Worked. That's with pigs in uh, the container. It worked. Great. And you can do a lot of cool things now with, with, when we have this feature. But there is one last thing uh, that we will take in the next video. And that is the last part here on my checklist. No path argument. Focus visible. Because uh, if we look into the i3 config, the default command here we have set to, to mod 4e, super e, is to execute launch.fm, d container, but with no specific path. And this means, it, it's this command, you know. Um, this is the command, and this is what happens when we execute this. It will create the home directory in, in the d container, because that's the default when we don't have any specific uh, directory set but uh, this isn't really now I close the home directory again because when I press super E here what I expect to happen here now really that is to focus this window this tuner window in the D container I don't want to create a new home directory window I want to focus the one that's open here and this uh, gets a bit weird now because then we have to figure out which window is actually visible in this tabbed container. Because we have several, we cannot just say uh, look for an existing Thunar window and focus that. It could take any of these three then, when we don't specify any specific path. But the specific window we want is the one, the one that have focus. And if no Thunar window have focus, like now if I have Sublime open instead, but we have Thunar windows and the container, I still don't want to open the home directory. I, I would probably, m most, uh, most likely w I want to focus uh, the last visible uh, or the last focused Thunar window or at least any of the currently existing Thunar windows, not creating a new one. Only, only time I want to create a new Thunar window is if none of them exist. Then it's valid to open the home directory. And uh, this is a chapter in itself to, to make, to add this functionality. But uh, we can do it, and we will do it in the next video. I say thank you for watching, all of you hardcore Thunar risers out there. See you in the next video. Have a great day. Bye.